All right, it's talk time now, and uh, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump has come under severe attack for his supposed disregard for women and for his uh, temperaments. Now, he way. in turn has consistently called his Democratic counterpart crooked uh, for handling of emails while Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. But in all of this, Nigerians in the United States say their home country has a lot to learn from their admission. Mm -hmm. Detola Dimola reports. A good question now. Shedun Obebe is a Nigerian American who came to the United States 40 years ago and has lived here since. He loves the stability in the U.S. electoral process. Well, the United States uh, political system is stable, that much we can say. It is democratic, as the term goes, but it's not infallible. It's subject to abuse also. Uh, but in the main, I would think that is a good system. And as the United States gets set to elect a new president, Obebe believes his original country has something to learn from the political system of the U.S. I would love our country, Nigeria, to be truly democratic. One aspect of Nigerian system that offends me personally to no end is the fact that we do not enforce our laws. We may have all these laws on the books. If we cannot enforce laws, if we have a situation where some individuals are literally above the law, we are not getting anywhere. From Washington, we head to Maryland, where Remy Duyile, who came to the US as a teenager 35 years ago, lives. She likes the electoral process here. The environment in America the purpose-driven life, the structure, the systems, the law and order. You know, there are, th there are systems that are in place. And there's also that intentional volunteerism, that spirit of connecting to where you can serve. When people, you know, with the election system here, most of the things we do are volunteer-based. And another thing Nigeria needs to do, they need to intentionally engage their diasporans. That's how the Indians made it. The Jewish people, their diasporans were the engine. Obebe agrees with Duyile that the involvement of Nigerians in diaspora in policy making back home will help the country build the structure necessary to move it forward. Nigeria's 2015 presidential elections was considered one of the most peaceful in the country's history. But many people say its success can be put to the willingness of the main contenders to work together and not necessarily a working political structure. And as Americans go to the polls, Nigerians in diaspora can only hope that its government will learn from its American counterpart and begin to put in place a working political structure. Detala Dimola, TVC News, Maryland. Mm. Very interesting there. You yeah. Know, that, which that aspect would you like to learn from the American process? Right uh, well, now? well, I think the entire election process that, that looks like a festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's have fun. And it's volunteers. Like, yeah, and just all for, of that. exactly. We, we, I guess we, we I would just like discussing. the opportunity to actually change my mind after casting my. my yeah, post. exactly. Uh, I can <laughs> just go can back go and back say, and no, I don't want again. I've, I've, I've switched over. I've, I've potted. <laughs> <laughs> you see? <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Now, we have uh, joining us right now, we have uh, the, uh, the public affairs analyst, uh, Dr. Dokun Adedichi. Good morning. It's good to see you. Good morning. morning. It's quite a while now. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of course, also joining us via Skype is Senior Lecturer, Department of Political Science, Lagos State University, Sylvester Odion Achaine. Good morning and uh, thanks for uh, joining us. Good morning to all of you. Yes, yeah, good morning. let's begin this way. Mm. What would be the hallmark of this, you know, U.S. Uh, 2016 presidential election for you? Some say the FBI's intervention would stand out for that? Um, if you look at that, then mm. you look at the negative of American political process. Mm. I think for me, the historical perspective that it catches my fancy, mm. in the sense that in spite of America's 40 years of freedom, of constitutional democracy, they're providing a woman, they're giving the template for a woman to be a president. Mm. For me, that is huge. Uh, considering the fact that how far America has traveled, mm -hmm. even with their kind of sophistication, there was still a nagging fear of women attending. But this is the first time a platform has been, and I think she will win. That would mm -hmm. be the hallmark for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll all right. get to see that. <laughs> we'll get to see all that. Now, uh, we'll come to you, Dr. Sylvester Odion, shortly.
Uh, but before we come to you, let's uh, give our people some uh, information in here. One thing is certain. Wherever the 2016 U.S. presidential election swings, it is sure to bring a first. Now, the United States of America will either elect the first female president ever or the oldest president ever. That's wow. one. <laughs> yes. Now, while all the candidates battle for the Oval Office, the real race today is between the candidates of the Democratic and Republican parties, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Mm. There are 50 states in the U.S., but when it comes to presidential elections, there are some states that lean towards some political parties and others called the battleground states where the outcome could swing in favor of any candidate mm. even even at the last, last minute exactly mm -hmm. and then swing states are largely determined through opinion polls and results of previous elections in 2016 the states that are being regarded as swing states according to different polls include uh, pennsylvania ohio florida wisconsin new hampshire minnesota iowa michigan nevada colorado Arizona, North Carolina, among others. Long list. There is a long list of uh, mm. swing states. So either of them will do anything to ensure they get uh, those states in there. Now, uh, let me come to you, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Sylvester Odion here. Now, this election, you have been monitoring things from uh, the, the, the beginning and from the outset. What do you think, from your own opinion, are the issues driving this election? this year in uh, American uh, politics mm. there are traditional issues mm. uh, which are the drivers of the electoral process in the US one has to do with the economy and the other one has to do with um, uh, national security of course uh, that is related again to foreign policy and all of those are the key issues really and of course recently issues of immigration have also come to the uh, to come to the fore. Uh, so also uh, is the question, the issue about climate change. You know, has also come to the fore because U.S., uh, including China and a few other countries, are, are some of the heaviest emitters of you know greenhouse gas uh, gases you know globally. And so those are some of the issues. But I think that one point I, I like to go back to the point you. You, uh, you mentioned earlier about the hallmark of the, of the election, mm. which is that for the first time in the history of American elections, you could see clearly that the American establishment, you know, is in favor of a single candidate. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is dangerous, you know, for, for the American democratic system. A situation where you have the entire establishment, you know, rooting for a single candidate out of two major contenders. Uh, well, I mean, was this really avoidable, uh, Dokun, that, you know, the, the whole system seems to be backing, you know, the, the establishment? Is it not a function or a result of, you know, a Donald Trump angle that he has brought to this whole electoral process? You see, I, I do appreciate what Dr. Uh, Akain has said, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's true in, in, in reality. Uh, the establishment, the establishment, if it says establishment, does it then mean a various component of the American system? But if it says the presiden presidency, yes, it is because this is the first time truly that a sitting American president will campaign so uh, ferociously yes. for a candidate. But it, it's obvious, it's protecting his legacy because everybody knows, except for certain sentiments, that Trump is not a candidate for presidential for a presidency in American setting. It's going to set the whole world back. And so the FBI, for instance, mm -hmm. the other components of it, you can't say the total establishment of American politics is for Clinton. But you have the media, I mean, which oh. he has he has actually to a large extent accused the media of supporting no, the no, establishment. Let me, let me, and it almost seems like blackmail at, you know, no, it's uh, not at, true. at some point. Let okay. me be very clear about the media aspect. Do you know that Trump has benefited Mm. most significantly exactly. from media exposure mm. by right from, right the, from beginning. the very beginning mm. because of his celebrity posture and all the things that he stood for as a, as, as a man and not only that for his tomfoolery <laughs> you see because yeah. when he speaks it catches fancy <laughs> and then people throw it and he was getting that time for it exactly. so when so people that, is, that is media attention by default not, not because exactly it's the same thing. <laughs> it gets, it gets proved to <laughs> people. <laughs> no, no, you see, but uh, the media, 
Oh, John. The media, the Wall Street are all rooting for Hillary Clinton. No, even, let the, me even, the, even the polls, even the polls, you know, that are coming out, poll results, simulations, all of them are geared towards, you know, selling Hillary Clinton's candidacy. That's that, the truth. That's not mm. true. Mm. That's not true. <laughs> you know why I would say that? You see, each each party has a group of posters for them that do the underground. I was listening to David Axelrod, who yes. campaigned for Obama, and he told how they do this. You can, yeah, you can follow opinion poll, which is general, but some people sit down. This is their job. You see, the, the thing that I believe, and let's be very frank with it, how in God's name will Trump be a president of America? Look, let's be honest. Yes, you might say I'm biased for Clinton. Mm -hmm. I am. That's the truth. I'm always there by as for them Democrats. Mm. Because when and Democrats so, so your views are not objective. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well he, he, he said he has bias for, I do. for Clinton, so I mean, there's not too. There, but, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Let's go on a break and then we come back on this still with us. All right, thanks for staying with us on TBC Breakfast. We've been discussing the American election and the electoral process. It's a D-Day now uh, and uh, certainly Americans will be waking up into the final day of voting. So many people have been voting over the past week. But yeah, today, so about 30 million or so Exactly, already. had voted. Yeah, yes, but, early votes. Yeah, but, but today is actually. the main day. This is the yes. main day today. Mm. So from today now, before the next 24 hours, we'll get to know who the President of the United States is going to be and Ooh, the whole world talk is, about wait, waiting is waiting to exhale. Waiting to exhale. Remember <laughs> when we're waiting to see the white smoke in Rome to see the, the to, know, to get pole. to know who the Pope is. All right, before we deviate. Well, all right, fine. <laughs> all right, um, let's get you some information here. Yes. That despite popular belief, the U.S. Constitution does not provide for the popular election of the American president. Rather, it provides for a popular election of presidential electors. Now, hmm. citizens of the United States do not elect their president directly. Here's how it works. Now, each candidate running for president mm -hmm. in the U.S. has a group of electors in every state. Yes, mm. and the electors are generally party officials with years of service who are chosen by their political parties in each state. Mm. According to Article 2 of the U.S. Constitution, electors cannot decide uh, to elect the president. Mm. Each state is entitled uh, well, allotment of electors equals the number of members in its congressional delegation. Mm. Well, that's hmm. kind of complex it's in there. It's so complex, it and I'm complex. still trying uh, to unravel to, to it. To certainly in my understand mind. the system, but mm. however, one for each member uh, in, in the House of Representatives plus two for the senators in the state. Now, for, for example, California, the most populous U.S. state, has the most representation in the United States Congress with 53 representatives and two federal senators. Hence, California, with 55 electoral votes, has the most seats in the U.S. Electoral College, making it one of the states every, uh, every candidate desires to, to win. win. Uh, as it stands, I think Hillary has about 268 or mm. thereabout. I don't know what it stands at uh, as at this morning. Now, on the other hand, some states have just three electors, two senators and one representative. In fact, there are eight such states, and they are Wyoming, Alaska, Delaware, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Vermont, and the District of Columbia. Mm. Of the 538 seats that make up the total number of voting representatives in Congress, 435 are members of the House of Reps, plus 100 senators and three electors given to the District of Columbia under the 23rd Amendment of the Constitution. Mm. Now, most states have a winner-take-all system that awards all electors to the winning presidential candidate in each state but Maine and Nebraska each have a variation of proportional representation with each state splitting their votes. Now, Maine has two districts, so its vote can be split 3-1. Nebraska has three districts, so it could split 4-1 or 3-2. Nebraska had a 4-1 split in 2008 when its Omaha-based district voted for Barack Obama, while the other districts went easily for John McCain. Mm.
Now, after the presidential election, the governor of each state prepares a certificate of ascertainment listing all the candidates who ran for president and the names of their respective electors. Now, the certificate of ascertainment declares the winning presidential candidate in each state and the electors of that, of that candidate will represent the state at the meeting of the electors in December of the election year. Now, the electors meet in their respective state capitals where they cast their votes for president and vice president on separate ballots. Mm. Each state's electors' votes are recorded and sent to the U.S. Congress and the National Archives as part of the official records of the presidential election. All right. Now, each state's electoral uh, votes are counted in a joint session of Congress on the 6th of January in the year following the meeting of the electors. Now, the incumbent vice president as president of the Senate uh, presides over the count and announces the results of the vote. The president of the Senate then declares which person, if any, have been elected president and vice president of the United States. And the president-elect takes the oath of office and is sworn in as president of the United States on January the 20th in the year following the presidential election. Mm. And that's about three months after the election, of course. Now, the, but the question is, what if no candidate wins in the majority of the electoral votes or if there is a tie? Mm. And now for them, it's not a problem. This is how it works. Mm. Now, the House of Representatives selects a president from among the five candidates uh, with the most votes. Now, each state's delegation has a single vote that will be taken when the new Congress convenes in January, with each state having one vote. Uh, the Senate selects a vice president by the same process. Now, this scenario hasn't played out since 1876, mm. though it almost happened in the year 2000. <laughs> yes, remember, I think that had to do with uh, yeah, Florida. Yeah, the Florida yes, issue, yeah. Judge W. Yeah, George, Bush. George Bush. And, okay. Now, that year, many were once again reminded by events that the candidate who receives the most votes nationwide does not necessarily become president of the U.S. Uh, for a candidate to become president, he or she must win enough state uh, elections to garner a majority of electoral votes. Now, presidential campaigns therefore focus on winning states, not on winning national a national majority. majority. <laughs> If that wasn't confusing, I don't know what would be confusing <laughs> to you. I but, mean, we, but it's, we it's, actually it's, thought that, you know, the American electoral process was really simple and very straightforward, you know, and all of that. But for, for people who, you know, for whatever reason, are paying a lot of attention to this particular election, they're finding out that it's not as straightforward as, you know, we once believed it was. Maybe for people like us, because they don't operate their system, mm -hmm. but they've been operating their system, and they had reasons over the years to keep monitoring and then uh, adjusting it. Mm -hmm. But I think it works for them in the sense that he only can be a problem like he almost was in 2000. Mm -hmm. Most of the times, the persons that, that, that win the electoral majority also wins the national majority. Mm -hmm. So it works out for them. Um, but we're just hoping that it never has to happen. It's okay. That <laughs> some, some, but well, I think they're used to their system yeah, and they, they know how to, they know how to handle it. And it's as simple Absolutely. as that for them. Now, for them. Let, let's, the, the, the theory here that the, it means that the electors that we're talking about can thwart the popular will and mm. vote for a candidate not supported by the voters of their state. Now, in practice, however, electors are pledged to cast their votes in accordance with the popular vote and faithless electors who go against the popular vote are extremely rare. <laughs> now, had there been a faithless elector in 2000, an elector who pledges to vote for a certain candidate but shows up at the state capitol and uh, votes for someone else, Al Gore might have become president. Mm, of course. Mm. But let's uh, go back in time and look at that infamous uh, U.S. election. Now, the United States presidential election of, tw of 2000 was the 54th uh, quadrennial presidential election. It was held on Tuesday, November 7th of that year. The contest was between Republican candidate uh, George W. Bush and Dem Democratic candidate Al Gore and various uh, third party candidates, including Ralph Nader. Uh, the 2000 presidential election was the fourth election in US history and the first in 112 years in which the eventual winner failed to win the popular vote after the elections of 1824, 1876, and 1888. And some people have been wondering, is that the systemic rigging that Donald Trump was talking about? Okay, but uh, let's bring in <laughs> Sylvester uh, exactly. Odion uh, in here. Uh, 
Odion, what, what, what's your take on, you know, this uh, process that, you know, one minute it looks like it's, you know, rather straightforward and the next minute it's not as simple as, you know, one would have imagined. Some are already saying that the, the, the you know, s electoral process that the, you know, that America has sold to the rest of the world, the democratic process, is not even what they're practicing. Odion... <laughs> All right, okay, I think, we're I think we're lo we lost the line Sorry, there, but we'll get it back anyway. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, I don't think that's true. No, when you look at, okay, for example, right. you can vote and then go back to mm. the you know polling station and you know you can actually change your mind. All right, I think we have, we have uh, Odeon back. Odeon is back. Yeah. Yes. Odeon, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure you, you got uh, the question I asked earlier. You know, what, what's your take really? As far as the American, you know, form of democracy or electoral process is compared to what we are practicing in terms of how simple or complex do you think it is? Odion, did you hear my question? Well, I, I think the past nature of uh, the electoral process if you look at the electoral systems globally, uh, yes, uh, I, I think I did it. I'm saying, I'm saying that that is the nature of the electoral system. All right, uh, I, I think, yes, so, Dr. Sylvester, you know, we, we can't really get you clearly. Uh, we have to fine tune the line so we can hear you clearly for the sake of our audience. Uh, uh, viewers rather who are watching from uh, home now the the let, let me ask you uh, Trump at the time came up with saying that uh, well the Democrats have uh, concluded plans in fact they have finalized ways to rig the election there's the system as the a matter system, of fact as mm. has has no, the, in, in the system there you, you were talking about they operate the system mm. so mm -hmm. they know how it works mm. now everyone has faith and confidence in, that process. Process. in the process. Mm -hmm. So when a candidate comes to say this, if the effect the plans to rig the election, it takes everyone by surprise. You see, let me tell you, that is why many people, even people like me, can't stand Trump, <laughs> is torpedoing the system. And a man cannot be rabble rouser in the system that has worked for so many years. There are issues in America, and that's why the Constitution, they try to amend it, and they have amendment, this amendment. That is a mature democracy. What Trump is doing, and what he does, anything he does not win is rigged. Mm. It, go check his lifestyle. He's always fighting against the system, yet benefiting from the system. Is that kind of a man. He, 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 he. So for me, he's for crafty. Him, it's crafty. For him to say the system is rigged, is beyond the pale. I mean, that's why Americans are fighting because they know how the system works. And that is the way the system has worked and produced precedent. And in 2000, for instance, Al Gore had uh, um, conceded until they now found that there was something. And you know, there's a system in Florida that triggers itself when the, the vote difference is less than 1%. Uh, and that was what the system did. And so they now have to do a physical recount and then by the time they then said, look, we need to check this. I had the popular vote. Florida is the only thing we wait for. They went to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said 5-4. And then that was it. And he said, no problem. I may not agree, but that is what our system says. Anyone who fights the American system is destroying the system. There are, there are ways in which you can call for different kind of, for a man to come to say the way we've been voting and the system is rigged against me because I'm not winning. So are you saying then that if you are anti or anti, as mm. Americans would say, <laughs> establishment, mm. you know that you cannot become president of the United States? That's not true is as well. It it's not totally true. I mean, there'll be people who have been outside of the establishment who have won. Jimmy Carter was not part of the establishment, was only governor of... Uh, I think Georgia, and then and a peanut farmer, and he came to win. Okay, okay. let's quickly take a break. Yeah. We, we'll have to go on a break and return with more. All right, uh, if you're just joining us, you're watching TVC Breakfast, and we're discussing the U.S. election. Is the D-Day, as yes. some will call it. 
in the United States and uh, Americans worldwide are looking forward. In fact, not just Americans, the whole world is looking forward to how things are going to turn out from today's uh, voting because countries are going to align and realign their foreign policies depending on who emerges president of the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. We have uh, in the studio Dr. Dokun Adedeji. Uh, he is one person following on this election that we've been talking about this. We also have uh, Dr. Sylvester Odion Akai with us on Skype. Now, let me come to you, Odion. I guess we can hear you clearly now. Uh, Ngozi was asking you a, a question earlier on that the American system, the, the presidential system of government or the democracy, if you, if you will, that a lot of countries, including Nigeria, has adopted uh, in, our, in our minds as Nigerians, it seemed a little very simple, straightforward, easygoing, but mm. breaking it down into the way Americans really run it uh, is not really as easy or simple. I think that's essentially because of the structure of government in the United States of America. Yeah. Uh, federalism is practiced you know, truly in the United States of America. True. And when you have a, a plural electoral system, you know, it allows for variance, in which case you have element of proportional representation, which you have in a, a states like uh, Maine or Nebraska and a few others. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a mixed system, sort of. And that is the nature of plural system, you know, uh, plural electoral system. And beyond that, like Nigeria and a few other countries, you know, that adopted the U.S. presidential system, did not, of course, adopt everything hook, line, and sinker. And you know, in Nigeria, we have, you know, what you call a first past the post, mm. simple majority, you know, system, mm. and that's what happens in our own case. But the kind of complexity where you have elements of proportional representation as well as you know a simple, a simple majority a rule within the u.s system makes it a little bit complex and also because you carry it is difficult to distinguish between the, the, the popular vote as well as the vote for the electors because when you vote the electors you are simultaneously also casting the so-called popular vote in the u.s system uh, okay, now uh, let me stay with you, Odion. Uh, looking at the the process so far, in, in terms of the campaigning and all of that, uh, you know, many people have tagged this election as the lowest point in American electoral, you know, um, or democratic history. Uh, I don't know what you you feel about that. Do you think, you know, I even in spite of all the mudslinging, you know, email issues? Uh, the words coming out of uh, Donald Trump and all of that, that they still, ha you know, were able to focus on issues like Obamacare, for example, immigration uh, and all of that. What's there for us to learn, really, as, you know, Nigeria practicing this American-style democracy? I think that what we are seeing in the U.S. system, the, the issues which they have all related to are traditional issues, you know, that usually come up in the U.S. electoral system or electoral process. Issue of economic taxation and all of that. But the real the re point is that because of the, of, the, of, the, of the low quality, the low profiling of the candidates, Trump as well as you know, Hillary Clinton, uh, much of the population is awakened you know, to, the, to, the, to the stake, to the democratic stake you know, that the election entails this time around. So that everybody you know, is angry to vote, you know, uh, to to turn the table in whichever side. Mm. I think that that's the real issue. All right, uh, Sylvester. Let, we don't have all the time, but let yeah. me ask you this uh, before uh, we go. Now, uh, uh, although you haven't said it, you haven't declared it, but it seems you have bias for uh, uh, Trump as it is. But let me ask you: uh, If Trump wins the presidency, what kind of president do you think uh, Trump is going to be? How beneficial would that be for? Uh, countries that have affiliation to United States one way or the other, especially in the economy? When it comes to dealing with superpowers, will, you know, uh, weaker countries, the continent of Africa or Nigeria, we are always concerned about how to retain our national sovereignty. Mm. And so any superpower that would deconstruct and undermine our national sovereignty, for me, is not, uh, you know, the best for our own national interest. I think that is the point. What is it? What is in there for Africans? What is in there for Nigerians? Nobody has addressed that question, and people are merely carried away, you know, by the face or faces of candidates involved in the elections. Either candidate a Clinton or a, a Donald Trump, 
will not, you know, uh, be charity for Africa. That's the point. They are not going to run, they are not going to, you know, uh, uh, hype your economy for you. They are not going to upscale your economy for you. Rather, they are going to exploit your system, you know, as it is. So that's the point. So whether you have a Donald Trump, you have a Hillary Clinton, for me, it's not going to be positive for the continent. Okay, mm. so the, the, that means the American agenda is really still the mm. most important thing. Whether it's a Trump or Hillary, that's what they push. You see, I, I like How, the way yes. Sylvester has put it. Mm. One thing that I've always told people is this. No matter who becomes American president, basic things don't change. Mm. You see, the, the thing that we forget in Nigeria, Africa, is this. We think people are there for us. If you don't define your own humanity mm. and define your own nationality, nobody's going to regard you. Israel is like Lagos State. If Israel sneezes, the war catches cold. But if Nigeria sneezes, everybody walks past and we <laughs> go away. Because we have not established a political relevance on the global landscape. Mm. Until Africa can get its act right. Look, we're talking about American presidential election. The purposes of office by an American for a Nigerian president, the power he has is greater than the power of Obama. I'm talking about you know relevance and all of that. Russia is a major factor in this particular. It, it is because of his sinister, sinister motives. Mm. Russia can never again attain to any global responsibility. I can bet you, it can only be the cynical areas and be causing all this. World. He has lost his relevance because a man like Putin has destroyed the essences of Russian uh, nationality. If you see what he has done, I mean, if I digress a bit, when the power was in prime ministership, he was prime minister. Yes. When they changed the constitution to become president, he became president and made them changed. Mm -hmm. And see, he's been there for how many years? <laughs> see, the, the thing for me is, as a Nigerian, I will love Clinton to win for personal situation. Mm -hmm. It's not because of what they would do for Nigeria. It is what Nigeria will do that will secure global attention that is important. Mm. Nobody respects you because you're big. We will be respected because of the things we do to our people. We don't respect our own people. And let's come it, back to the, the this uh, you know U.S. electoral process. What mm. exactly stands it out? You know, apart from you know the, the process that you see in other places. I mean, looking at mm. the so-called um, you know swing states, mm. battleground mm. states, and all of that, and how they actually factor in mm. into the you know uh, final outcome of the. Uh, you see, one year that speaks to me particularly about the American electoral process was 2004. Mm. You know, it was also very rancorous and not the uh, Kerry and Bush. Mm -hmm. The the morning, November 9th, when Kerry was going to concede, he said something that we never forget. He said, yesterday we were Democrats and Republicans, but today we are Americans. Mm. That is the beauty of American mm. elect, uh, electoral process. That's why everybody is shouting about Trump. It's never happened before that you lose an election in America, no matter how close, you respect the plurality that has come, and then we move on as Americans. Mm. That is the beauty of their own democracy. And for me, it, it is what I'm looking forward to tomorrow morning when oh. Clinton becomes president. All right. Uh, uh, Sylvester, let me ask you this final question now. Um, whoever becomes president of the United States, uh, keeping a Republican and a Democrat aside, when they become Americans again, mm -hmm. what will be the challenges or the issues that the American president will be taking up, really? Well, essentially, they will need, of course, to focus on, on their economy, ensure that uh, more jobs are created, you know, beyond what uh, Obama has done uh, uh, at, uh, at the moment. Of course, the war on terrorism, which is a global, a global issue, will continue. The, the, the method of engagement, you know, it's not, it's not clear at the moment, but of course, the Putin that people are putting aside that is trying to provide a balance <laughs> on, a, on, a global, on a global scale, uh, the U.S. will have to co contend with Clinton, of course, and they also have to contend with China. If you look at Brzezinski a few days ago, Brzezinski was saying that the U.S. does not need to antagonize a country like China because mm. China banding up with, with Russia, you know, will mean really mm. serious challenge mm. for American global hegemony. Absolutely. Of course, we want, you know, fair play within the international, you know, uh, uh, field of play mm. uh, from the Americans. But his dominary attitude, of course, will always be resented by other countries that respect their own national sovereignty. Uh, absolutely. Thank we want you. to Thank respond to, yes. to that very quickly. And then, are we going to have a Nixonian event where this whole email thing, in spite of the fact that the FBI has said 
Clinton has no case to answer. Mm. Will it continue if she does emerge? President? For me, follow up to what uh, Sylvester said. Yes. I think the primary thing in America is the healing process okay. mm -hmm. because there's a fracturing yeah. of trust and everything. That would be the primary thing, and then the other things can come. Let, let me tell you something about this email something. I think for me it's overbitten. Mm. The email, look, it's been on for like almost two years. It would be a conspiracy, a right-wing conspiracy if they continue with it. Yeah, and it's so sad that someone like Shafi, a senator of the American uh, Congress, mm. is saying that it will be a moment of impeachment to a person that has not won an election. Mm. It tells you about the rapidity of Republicans. And let me tell you, it is the state of the, uh, the, 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 the hatred and bitterness for Obama that led them, the Republicans to the arms of a Trump. Mm. Mm. There was so much bitterness. And you know, the thing is, when a man is cool and he understands the process yeah. and he knows what he's doing, he makes a complete joke. That's oh, yeah. Thank you that. so much, Do <laughs> thank, Doku thank Adedeji, uh, social commentator, and of course, uh, Odion Sylvester yeah, of the Sylvester. Lagos State University, uh, Lasso. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for joining us on the show. Final word, Farid Zakaria says, Trump is a cancer on American democracy. How True. do you deal with this cancer? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one. But however, we here, 